Speech in the Imagination Jesus was the Word became flesh. Jesus himself said that his words were words of life, and his apostles clearly gave priority to the ministry of the Word. The apostles did not control the Word, but the Word which was, quote, planted in them was, quote, compelling them to preach. Now, we can make a distinction between the Word as Jesus Christ and the Word as the Holy Scriptures. See The Ordinary Means of Grace for more on that subject. Another helpful distinction can be made between the Word as we read it and the Word as we speak it. The written Word of God enhances our ability to speak the Word of God. Throughout history, many believers only heard God's Word as it was spoken to them. In my view, speech continues to be the most prominent means of influence on earth, and this seems to have been true from the very beginning. God spoke creation into existence. Adam called things by name, and the blessings and curses of the Old Testament were pronounced by the prophets, etc. So what does this mean for us today? The written word, the text of Scripture, certainly enhances our knowledge of God, and yet knowledge, unvoiced, seems to lack something essential. It seems that knowledge was meant to be spoken. And because speech is such a powerful mode of communication, Christians should learn to speak God's word with conviction. Reading and writing have their place in Christian development, but too often those disciplines foster a private lifestyle instead of drawing us near to those who dearly need our testimony. Not from a distance, not mediated, but up close and in person. So then, students of God's written word should be careful to constantly practice speaking God's word, both to ourselves and to others. There are many different genres represented in the Bible. The simplest, and perhaps the most powerful genre, is story, or narrative. In our modern context, it might be necessary to emphasize that storytelling is not the same as fiction. We tend to equate those two words, fiction and storytelling, but the distinction between the two is very important. The most mundane retelling of an event, such as describing our commute to work, is storytelling. When we give shape or form to a series of events, then we are telling a story. And while these stories are, in a sense, objective or factual, our stories are also loaded with subjective or personal value judgments. Virtually all history books tell a story. We need to keep that in mind as we discuss storytelling. We aren't talking about creating fictions. Here is a working definition for storytelling. Storytelling is giving shape form, or coherence to a set of observations. The Bible is filled with all kinds of stories. Yes, the Bible contains a lot more than stories or narratives, but the story is central. The story provides a coherent framework for the other contents of the Bible. 
if we are serious about speaking the word of God in daily life, then we ought to become very familiar with the stories of the Bible. As mentioned earlier, storytelling is an inescapable mode of communication. We can neglect this faculty and remain poor communicators, or we can abuse this faculty by creating false or distorted narratives, or we can nurture this faculty through constant and careful practice. The stories of the Bible are all concentrated around key people. If we follow the lives of these key people, then we can easily trace, from Genesis to Revelation, the overarching story of redemption. So, here's a practical suggestion. Become deeply familiar with the stories surrounding the key people of the Bible, and then begin sharing these stories with other people. It's worth mentioning some cautions at this point. If we deliberately reinvent these stories to suit our own purposes, then we distort God's wisdom and expose our own ignorance. In addition, we should avoid shortchanging the testimony of the Bible by intentionally neglecting certain parts of the story. Intricacy enhances appreciation. Now, of course, there are various constraints that will limit our ability to delve into all the details in our everyday conversations, but this principle is clear. The more detail, the better. That brings us to one of the great challenges of our contemporary culture. Many of us are deeply immersed in a culture of screen-watching. In addition to the lack of serious content, which seems to be part and parcel of the entertainment culture, there is a deeper concern here. Screens tend to do most, if not all, of the imagining for us. When we watch, our minds are passive. When we hear, our minds have to imagine the scenarios being described. And this might be one of the reasons why so many of us fail to bring the Word of God into our everyday conversations. That is, we have lost the ability to imagine these stories for ourselves. A curious person might ask the following question. Can't we learn the Bible from watching videos? The first problem I see with that mentality is this. Bible stories on screen tend to be extremely loose with interpretation. In many cases, filmmakers simply rewrite the narratives. Generally speaking, Videos that have remained true, or at least very close, to the biblical text are either too low budget or too boring for consumers. The stories of the Bible are clearly not boring, but the medium of a screen is very different from that of a hearing-only medium. Modern videos require a certain amount of dialogue and plot development that a book, especially an ancient book, does not provide. So then, filmmakers have two options. Add their own creative content to the story, or produce a boring film. And even if the Bible were presented in an accurate and compelling series of videos, then we would still not be using our own imagination. When we imagine for ourselves, then the stories begin to take up residence within us. 
Nowadays, videos are a dime a dozen. We watch videos primarily for entertainment, and the content typically does not shape or reshape the way we think. But when a certain text or a certain speaker captures our imagination, that content may permanently alter the way we think. So then, if we want to learn to speak the word in everyday conversation, then our imagination must be trained to do so. Therefore, I highly recommend getting deeply acquainted with the stories of the Bible. The video labeled Existential Bible Reading illustrates one compelling way to do this.